Welcome to London in 5 Minutes. Today's topic, Revolutionary Tactics and the Vanguard Party. Much of Lenin's writing on revolutionary tactics came out of first-hand experience. In this sense, Lenin's proposals are interesting as successful implementations of political strategy, but may have more meaning to the conditions he was living in than to those we live in today. First and foremost, Lenin held that without organization, individual actions moved in various directions, as opposed to a unified direction towards the achievement of the revolutionary goals. Lenin believed that the fragmentation of revolutionary efforts across the country was the biggest weakness of the overall movement. Individual work was too narrow and removed from an integrated national push for change, which becomes a detriment to the prospects of achieving the right goals. One of the proposed tactics for the integration of the revolutionary movement across the country was the foundation of an all-Russia political newspaper. The creation of such a tribune would establish a platform upon which the working class and the revolutionaries could project their voices, disseminate information, encourage political education, and facilitate organization. Lenin likened the idea of a national political newspaper to the scaffolding that surrounds a building that is being constructed. The scaffolding molds the structure and allows the building to work together and communicate as they move forward in their project. Thus, the newspaper would bring about the natural formation of a permanent political organization, a feature of the revolutionary movement that Lenin believed was lacking in his status quo. Ultimately, even the creation of such a party would not spell the quick demise of the autocracy. Lenin suggested that the final blow to the regime he was facing would likely be an unexpected cataclysm. This ended up being the case with World War I. Regardless of such a reality, Lenin believed that the party must carry on in its actions, since standing idly by and waiting for such an event is unproductive. Lenin differentiated between spontaneous workers' uprisings and conscious political actions on the part of the workers. The former were a manifestation of frustration and discontent with the status quo, but they lacked any concentrated direction in terms of demands and ideals. The latter were the same manifestations used to achieve political goals such as better labor legislation and improved working conditions. The need to channel discontent into concrete political demands and goals was one of the primary justifications for the creation of a party that represented the interests of the workers. During the late stages of Imperial Russia, Lenin's party was known as the Social Democratic Party. They of course later became better known as the Bolsheviks. Another reason Lenin presented as evidence for the necessity of a workers' party was that without the party, the workers' struggle would become one of negotiation with the capitalist class. Such a situation forced bargaining through the frameworks of a bourgeois society, which as Lenin pointed out, only affected the terms of the sale of labor power, and not a fundamental restructuring of society itself. This party, as Lenin envisioned it, was to become the vanguard of the revolutionary movement. In other words, it was supposed to lead the oppressed class, in this case the proletariat, to its political goals the abolition of the capitalist mode of production, the establishment of socialism, and so on. The leadership of the party was supposed to be a group of competent revolutionaries who essentially dedicated their lives to the cause and who could afford to be full-time revolutionaries. Whereas the majority of the people in the movement, either by choice or by necessity, could not commit to such full-time work, it would be the goal of the leadership to carry out the organizational tasks. Everything from appointing leaders in various areas to contributing to the dissemination of agitational literature, the leadership must be constantly pushing the movement forward. Lenin did reiterate, however, that the workers' movement as a whole should be as broad and public as possible and should take shape as a trade union organization. As a whole, communication between the ground and headquarters was to be fluid and adaptable. Lenin's portrayal of the Vanguard Party was that of an organic outgrowth of an already existing movement whose expertise and resources could be utilized by the masses for eventual liberation. That's where we're going to end this video. Lenin's tactics in general, and vanguardism in particular, are an interesting point of discussion, so feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it.